Marvel and anime have two of the hottest superhero teams right now, the Avengers of the MCU and the students and heroes of My Hero Academia. If you haven't heard of either of these franchises, then you've been living under one hell of an incredible rock. Both come with their individual differences, but no matter who you face, you're gonna have a bad time. But before we activate our quirks and assemble, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss any of our MCU and anime videos. Ooh, crossover time. Kicking things off, let's look at the makeup for both the Avengers and the students in My Hero Academia. Both sides have team chemistry, but the way they're made up differs from each side. This isn't a negative by any means, it's a reflection on how these teams were formed and what their purpose is. On the My Hero side of things, our main characters are students. We typically see Class 1A students alongside the actual professional heroes that are employed and fight villains. This is part of the fundamental understanding in this universe, which is also why we see a lot of troubles initially for the protagonist, Midoriya, or Deku. In this universe, superpowers are referred to as quirks, and being a superhero is on par with being employed as a police officer or firefighter. Deku starts off initially as a quirkless hero, putting him off the beaten path of his classmates. Not having a quirk or special ability reminds us of a particular member of the MCU. That's right, we're talking about Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. Tony is the only founding heavy hitter Avenger without any superpowers, sorry Black Widow and Hawkeye, as well as the sort of protagonist of the overarching Marvel Cinematic Universe. He and Deku use their lack of abilities to help catapult them to the level of their peers, although among peers, the closest to Tony Stark's level of power and self-narcissism is Katsuki Bakugo. Like Tony, Bakugo is good at what he does, and his ego is all the more inflated for it. They both have been showered with praise for their talents, Tony with his early childhood mechanics, and Bakugo with his adept level of quirk usage. Bakugo's so quirky. Much like the invincible Iron Man, he packs quite a punch with his technology-based attacks. His grenade bracers made for collecting his flammable sweat make for quite an explosive show when used on the battlefield or in the classroom. All of this puts Bakugo in direct confrontation with Deku in terms of what it means to be a hero in similar ways that Captain America and Iron Man test each other. Both Deku and Steve Rogers possess an unstoppable inner will to do right by others as a hero, or as an assist, even knowing they'll probably be destroyed for it. Plus, Deku and Steve both have trouble earning the worthwhile respect they long for in the beginning of their adventures. While Deku is initially quirkless, he soon comes into contact with All Might, a professional hero who definitely takes a lot of inspiration from Cap. All Might and Deku uncover the truth about Deku, and that he has the ability to accept the same transferable quirk All Might currently owns. Thus, Deku begins training as his student. Steve Rogers was originally a scrawny but idealistically powerful human. After being enhanced with the Super Soldier Serum developed by Dr. Erskine, he becomes the Star-Spangled Man with a plan. The Star-Spangled Man with a plan. Using these new abilities, he fights with the USA, duh, during World War II. But we're not just talking about individuals in this situation, no! We're also talking about how the team look as a whole, and the fact that there aren't a lot of women on both sides. It may be a little more proportionate on the My Hero side of things, but definitely noticeable nonetheless. It doesn't mean that they lack the cool female characters, though. Take Ochako Uraraka, for instance. Ochako is an A1 student with a cute and energetic personality, but don't let that change your opinion of this hero in training. She makes good use of her quirk, which allows her to make anything she touches float. She can also make herself fly, but it could potentially make her vomit. Mmm, gross. Still, it's a great quirk to have when you're doing battle, fighting villains and other stains of society. Plus, during her tenure as an intern for the hero Gunhead, she upped her fighting game. Wanting to learn martial arts and other hand-to-hand -hand tactics, she studied under Gunhead and expanded her range as an offensive hero. This gives her similar battle tactics as Natasha Romanoff, aka the Black Widow, a Russian spy with a haunted past. Natasha represents the female Avengers in the most kick-ass way. Literally, in every movie, she gives supervillains the business. Natasha is also a very smart and tactical fighter, something that Ochako can also relate to. While Natasha is more often multiple steps ahead of her allies and opponents, Ochako's intelligence is taken for granted or often ignored, but both women will remind you of who they are. She's not the only female hero, though. There's Momo Yaoyo Rozo, owner of a quirk that allows her to create things out of her body, and Suyo Asuyi, owner of the frog ability quirk. They both pull the weight that the Scarlet Witch pulls in the MCU. Scarlet Witch, aka Wanda Maximoff, is a genetically engineered miracle of an experiment that joins the Avengers during their confrontation with Ultron. Now, both sides have a lot going for them already. We've seen driven characters, diverse ability pools, and even access to monstrous amounts of power. But what about innately strong characters? Heroes that arrive ready to fight, to bag a villain, and shut the party down. Well, both sides have that too. Shoto Todoroki is an absolute powerhouse in Class 1A. Most of his classmates recognize his status as the strongest among them, even though he isn't the focus as much as Deku. He's even slated to eventually surpass the power of Hero All Might. A focused and driven student, he has complicated family issues 
issues that go along with his quirk. He can make half his body cold and half hot, giving him access to both abilities at will. However, he doesn't use both sets of powers all the time. His father, Enji, aka Endeavor, is where his fire side comes from as well as his disdain for his fire powers. His dad is the one who wants him to eventually surpass himself and All Might. He even ignores his other children to push Shoto further. These family ties are a talking point between Shoto Todoroki as well as the mighty Thor. Thor has also many pressures on his shoulders, most of which are due to the nature of his relationship with his father Odin. Odin pressures Thor into understanding the concept of being king, which Thor learns the hard way by being exiled to Earth. Plus, it helps that both Shoto and Thor use the elements as part of their battle tactics. Although Thor definitely wins the whose sibling was more affected by lack of attention contest between the two. Here's looking at you, Loki. Maybe one of the Todoroki siblings will do a heel turn in the later adventures. Hmm? Calling it. Both of these teams have chemistry that's necessary for the villains they face and other disasters that need action. With Class 1A, these are the heroes in training, yes, but that doesn't affect their ability to work together as much as you think, especially under effective leadership. This is a differing detail between the teams and how it affects their work. The Avengers use a two-leader system amongst their pool of heroes. Captain America and Iron Man take turns as quarterback, depending on the mission, and the knowledge they both bring to the table is completely valid and necessary. With Steve Rogers, you're given access to the knowledge that it took to beat the Nazis. He's tactically savvy as well as knowledgeable about the details of a battlefield and war in general. Plus, he hails from the greatest generation. So his inherent 40 sturdy values help keep the rest of the Avengers focused on the mission. While on the other side, Tony Stark in his Iron Man suit are the eyes and wonder of the modern world that Captain America doesn't have access to. Tony is a reminder of the current stakes and what the Avengers are fighting for. Free will, knowledge, and a better life for those who could be or were hurt by evildoers or his own weapons, of course. This is something we see in Tony both in his first movie and the 2012's The Avengers. Unfortunately, these two ideals clash and cause the band to break up after these two go toe-to-toe -to -toe during Captain America Civil War. Yeah, thanks, Bucky. With Class 1A, that doesn't seem to be the case. The class has a singular president that leads the group, with the vice president to back them up. The leader is Tenya Ida. Originally, Deku was to be class president, however, he turned it over as Tenya showed to be a better fit. Tenya's quirk, Engine, allows him orange juice-powered super speed, access with mini exhaust pipes in his calves. Oh yeah, you heard that right. Tenya is a fiercely dedicated and driven student, as well as incredibly proud of his family bloodline, some of which also possess the same engine quirk. But Tenya's singular focus and humility can get the class under control. Control, unlike some situations with Steve Rogers, who will come under teasing from his teammates just for being the swear police. So they have similarities and differences in many areas. Big whoop. As superheroes, the big question that really matters is, can they beat the villain and save the day? Well, yes, but the villains of My Hero Academia serve a different purpose than the more traditional MCU villains. For instance, My Hero Academia, a group of them have formed into a super alliance, not unlike the Legion of Doom or the Sinister Six, but on a much, much bigger scale. These villains have all combined to complete one sole mission, Murder All Might. The leader of this league of villains is currently Tomura Shigaraki. Tomura is very much down with the original cause of the League of Villains. He wants All Might dead because he wants to erase and replace what he stands for as a symbol of peace. Since quirks are more common than not having them, he feels like the world without them is more stable than the concept of peace and justice All Might has established. He's also ruthless in his methods towards getting his goal, as he murdered students at UA High School just to draw out All Might into using his power. Tomura also has a quirk known as Decay, which can disintegrate whatever he puts all five of his fingers on. Don't go shaking that guy's hand. His goals are ultimately in service of what he believes to be a better future for society, which is a similar mindset for the current Avengers baddie Thanos the Mad Titan. Thanos believes the worlds across the entire universe are plagued to fall into disarray due to overpopulation and a lack of resources. So he offers to kill half the population of the universe which he believes was a service. He's able to do this through his already incredibly strong alien physique, but mainly due to the Infinity Gauntlet. The gauntlet allows him to pull off whatever feat he wants at the snap of his fingers, thanks to being in possession of all six Infinity Stones, but the important thing is that both of these teams handle their situations well, despite not having the same heroic foundations. Class 1A is ultimately still a class that learns from and works alongside pro heroes. While we're excited about the potential of many of the students, especially Deku and Bakugo, they're still students at the end of the day. Not everyone who's a student is currently at the level of going out in the field, even if they have the strength on par with a student like Shoto Todoroki. The pro heroes deal with the real threats, while the students have homework, assignments, and a packing order that the Avengers don't have to deal with. Since being a hero is a public service occupation, they're broken up into different areas. The heroes of My Hero Academia typically just service Japan. With the Avengers, their exploits take them to different parts of the world to take on the evildoers. One confrontation is in New York City, the next is somewhere in Russia, then in Wakanda. The Avengers operate more as a world response team as opposed to a centralized unit of heroes. Although they do operate out of upstate New York, after the Avengers 
events of Age of Ultron. If the Avengers and My Hero Academia started working together to defend the Earth, it would be a huge advantage against supervillains. Japan could continue its method of sending out the pro heroes to handle immediate threats and wait for backup from the Avengers while the Earth's mightiest heroes can begin taking on the world-ending threats without any help from the heroes of Japan. Both Eastern and Western superheroes sure do pack a punch. Do you think Thanos would have won if he landed amongst All Might and his friends? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more MCU and anime content. Thanks for watching.